You made it. Welcome back, yeah, B-E-A, beautiful souls. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I think about the Warden rework that he's going to be getting. And uh, yes, I'm calling it a rework, whereas some people will be like, oh, it's just a buff. But no, this is actually changing quite a few things about the character and his viability and, of course, his animations. These animations, uh, essentially every what Warden main had been asking for since the beginning of freaking time. Yeah, he's still going to keep his chain shoulder bash. That essentially just means that he's going to be using it 24-7, but he gets new animations, and this makes him an entirely new character. He's going to look different, you're going to be like, oh, what are these animations? And it's really important that he gets those hyper armor freaking light attacks and heavy attacks during his chain offense. That's freaking crazy for 4v4. I kid you not, like, it doesn't do so much in duels, but in 4v4, this is going to be an astronomical change. Like, he wasn't that bad of a character if you were good with him and had some good game sense. Uh, and had matchup knowledge against certain characters, what you could do and what you couldn't do if you could stall a little bit or knew how to gank a little bit. But now with this change, I think he's going to be so much easier to use. The skill floor is going to be lower, and that's that can be a good thing, especially for like Vanguard characters. I think these characters should be a little bit easier to use and more straightforward. I mean, Kensei is one of the most straightforward characters and one of the more balanced characters, in my opinion, even though some people may disagree with me, but a character that just has 5 armor, soft feints, a 34 damage wall punish, which you have to be pretty near, and no enhanced lights of any sorts, and hyper armor only at the chain finishers. That is, quite frankly, all Kensei has. And that's also not to say that Kensei doesn't need some adjustments, it's just that he feels more fair to fight against, not as frustrating. And when it comes to Warden, Warden is now getting, he's getting upgraded in many ways. Hyper Armor always makes the character better, always, and dumbs down the character too. I am for making the character, I don't know about having Hyper Armor on his chain light attacks. I think that might be a little bit overkill, especially after his shoulder bash, because this chain bash is really good. You just have to know how to use it. But I'm fine with him having Hyper Armor on that chain zone attack and that chain heavy attack that deals 24 damage when I'm assuming you're going to be landing a fully charged, you are going to be getting a 24 damage heavy. And of course, the 27 damage heavy, that's also a new animation too. Now the question is, does he actually need that hyper armor on those double lot attacks when he half swords? I don't really think he does because he already has the option of using that hyper armor zone attack or the hyper armor heavy in case they actually just want to interrupt him. If he doesn't have that hyper armor line attack, then it just makes it so that he has different options he can use instead of just dumbing the character down. Because if he has hyper armor on everything, I think that's a little bit silly. It makes the character feel like you don't really have that much options besides hyper armor on everything. And I don't think we really want a character that, that has hyper armor on every single attack. Warden on neutral, he has that bash already, and it's going to have hyper armor on a fully charge, then he's going to have hyper armor on the lights, hyper armor on the zone, hyper armor on the heavy attacks. It's just, I think it's a little bit too much, and I'm sure we'll realize that when the testing grounds do come out. JC loves making a character like super busted as soon as he puts him in the TG because he always said before that we just wanted to see if it's actually overpowered or not. But I think a lot of players or people who are actually good at the game and have been playing for a long time know that too much of something is a bad thing. That's always the case for anything in the world, you know, too much femboys, too much drugs, too much of anything, too much of for honor, mind you. It's really bad for your soul. And I think too much hyper armor is bad for Warden. I know that there are a lot of times where I want hyper armor when I do land a bash in a 1v2 or in team fights. And he already has this. You have the option of using a zone, one with the big hitbox perhaps, and one that has hyper armor so you can guarantee the damage. It's really helpful with characters like Jane June and Griffin after a parry. You can essentially get good guarantee damage, and Warden will have this option. But just having high problem and everything, I think it's a little bit overkill. And I know one thing is going to happen is that as soon as a character becomes insanely good, and mainly due to hyper armor, they're going to call him a brain dead character. And Warden, right now in the live iteration, is not that much of a brain dead character. He's a little bit hard to use, even in 1v1s, if you are not good at reading your opponents and have good reaction times. So that's why I always say you need to at least have some good reads and some good reactions, because if any of the bash, and going for the parry uh, when they try to opt, it's like dude, it's all part of Warden's mind games. And once you get into that head, into their head, that's when he becomes incredibly strong. He does have unreactable chain bash with this uh, fully charged bash, but yeah, it also comes at a cost. So if you miss your bashes, you get guard broken a lot. So you have to be paying attention and focusing up with Warden. And in 4v4s, just having Hyper Armor as that crutch to deal your damage and do whatever you want, I think it's gonna be a little bit too much, and I'm hoping they tone it down. Uh, I do wanna see how it plays out, 
but given the fact that I can guarantee damage after a bash of any sorts with an unreactable vortex, I think that'll be pretty freaking strong. Now there is one question I have. Is this a good looking animation? The thing is, Ubisoft, these are probably just placements and they will be they will probably be fixing and adjusting these animations just like I was in all of the previous testing grounds with Lawbringer. Remember that weird looking animation that he had with his chain bash? It was the most disgusting looking animation I've ever seen in my life, but they fixed it and they made it look so much better. And then of course Ubisoft just removes it all out together, even though I think that would made it a little bit more interesting. But that's really besides the point. The animations will look better at the end of the day, and I think they'll smooth it out too. Right now, personally, I've been looking at it and reviewing over the footage. It doesn't look too bad. I think it looks just fine. I'm not an expert in the way of the longsword, but I'm sure you guys have plenty of opinions on the matter at hand here. So like, be sure to let me know if he's wielding the sword correctly or using it in the right manner because I'm sure Ubisoft has experts that they <laughs> that they uh, decide to listen to and hire to showcase some of these moves to the motion captures you know because there's all they have they have some money you know Ubisoft is a small indie company but I'm sure they have a couple of bucks here and there to get some uh, input from the experts out there, okay? I'm sure they're listening to the consultants as much as Netflix are listening to the historian consultants too. The one thing I really am concerned about is the sound design for the pommel striking the person or the blade just hitting, because the original sound is like a choo-choo, and it's quite satisfying to use. I've said it during my streams, the double light is a very satisfying sound after the shoulder bash, and I think it's something that should be kept. I honestly couldn't really hear it as JC was talking over the stream, and we'll have to wait till the test grounds comes out. But I'm hoping it is a new sound or something similar to it, because I don't think it should be making the same sound as the double lights, because it is using a blade on both ends on both of the attacks for the live version on the testing grounds. He uses like his uh, his guard too, I believe, or his handle uh, on some of his attacks, especially the light attack ones. And so I want to see if that's going to be a very satisfying hit. But I'm just hoping Ubisoft makes the sound design satisfying because the more satisfying sounds we have, you know, the more ASMR to our ears, the more it's going to feel like you're playing a knight character and you're actually half sorting. So please Ubisoft, get this right. I'm sure you can do it. You guys have the information and the power with your triple A indie company, okay? You also have Scalagram on YouTube. I <laughs> use him for sources or a consultant or uh, ask my boy Metatron. He'll, he'll set you straight, okay? He'll transform you into a noble one. Spread those wings. <laughs> <laughs> I also had concerns about Magi's stance swapping attacks and I would have liked something a little bit more chonkier, but when he does swap attacks, it doesn't sound that satisfying in my opinion. So that is why I propose Magi gets put in the testing grounds once again and gets new sound design for his stance swap. I think that'd be sick. I love the guy and I'm sure you guys will love him too when he becomes a Bloodborne character or gets a Bloodborne DLC because he basically has a trick weapon and it's freaking it's freaking badass. And really one thing to think about is that Bayek from Assassin's Creed uh, Origins, he could have been the skin <laughs> crossover. So I, I think it's a good idea to keep Exio in here or Zestio as the Peacekeeper skin and by honestly I really think Peacekeeper should get her own skin at the same time you know something really unique to her because she is a fan favorite she's really popular for a reason a lot of people play her even though she's pretty bad but uh, missed opportunities everywhere and I'm hoping we do get maybe a hunter skin or a hunter skin as some would say like a bloodborne skin from the blades of mercy maybe give that to peacekeeper she so she can get a second skin like like warden <laughs> so that'd be pretty freaking sick but then again shit is a sword and a dagger but maybe in the future we can get a two dagger character just like Eileen that'd be so awesome I'd be I would give them access to Zion's mainframe that's how much I want that skin that's how much I want Bloodborne too to be fair and of course Guts Warmonger because I did make a cosplay of it if you haven't seen that video go and check it out it's pretty sick I mean an all black freaking Warmonger freaking devastating to your career if you decide to fight her just just leave just drop your controller and just alt f4 and then just close the application. There's just one guy on Twitter that constantly asks for a berserker, a berserk style uh, character or sword for Highlander, and I commend him, but I, I don't think I've seen him post on uh, Ubisoft's Twitter <laughs> in a while. Like he did like day 90 or something like that, but <laughs> uh, I'm hoping we get some sort of a uh, great sword character in the future. Because we're not getting a berserk style thing because I think most companies try to steer away from berserk in general because it's a very graphic novel. 
for the last part of this video, I'll be going over some of my comments on my recent videos just to answer some questions that you guys had or uh, leave a comment on some of the things that you guys have said. So thank you so much for the support, everyone. I wouldn't be here without you guys. Let's get down and answer some of the questions. And uh, this one is so funny. I give it a month before warden mates are complaining for more. Again, warden main, they are, they do suffer from main protagonist syndrome, but uh, they are also the poster boy for honor. And they, the knights in general, haven't been really receiving that much love. And I think it's good that Warden is kind of getting these changes in the first place because I I, I found him pretty boring when it came to using the same same, child, same side lights 24-7. And I'm glad he's getting new animations for that. However, I go to say, all the animation money, <laughs> it just went to Warden, man. And they didn't do anything for my poor Lawbringer or my Conqueror. It feels bad. And I really hope that they, they touch up Lawbringer and Conqueror very soon. I, I don't think there's... I don't think there's a character in this game that needs more love than those two, besides Nusha. Um, nothing nerfed, and I have more refreshing experience dealing with hate to carry spam than all the other characters because hate to carry heavies, they're variable timed, and if you don't have good reactions, if you're playing on old gen, you're not gonna be able to do well with her. But but the Shinobi nerf, I think they're going about the wrong way. Uh, the damage nerfs are fine, but uh, they need to address his double dodge issue and his safeness when it comes to like traversing the map, and that's that's Shinobi's main issue. So they don't really need to be touching that much of his damage. Like the damage is good for Shinobi, but I think they should focus on something else. They this is just the first steps, mind you, as well. Just the first steps. Rip Orochi. So Seer tier again. Nice. What a mess. No, I think Orochi is still going to be very strong. It's not the damages that made him like super good. It's that fast ass heavy and his unreactable mix up now with his kick and undodgeable heavy attack from his storm rush. That's that's what makes him really strong in this meta. It's not necessarily the damage. It's the the way his heavy attacks go through time and space and hit you from across the map. That's what's making him making him very powerful right now in this meta. And of course, the dodge cancel recoveries after dodge cancel recoveries. They remove to carry's hyper armor. She'll be balanced. What? No, you seriously asked for them to remove hyper armor from a heavy. Let's remove Shigoki hyper armor too. Has to be a joke. Well, the thing is, Shigoki he is a pretty overtuned character right now when it comes to his forward dodge bash and his heavy attacks. They're not. You know, if you're if you're bad at the game and you can't parry the the heavy attacks then, you know, it definitely is a skill issue because uh, I don't I don't find any issue with him when it comes to his heavy attacks. So the problem with Shigoki is his forward dodge bash and being able to use a heavy attack right afterwards. But the issue with Hitakiri is that she has infinite chain heavy attacks that are variable time and catch you when you dodge. Shigoki's heavies don't have that much track and Hitakiri's are much better in comparison and it's infinite. And the problem with it beforehand was that you couldn't guard break her in the beginning of the heavy. So the issue is that if you once you remove this the crutch so when it comes to the hyper armor then the character will be much more fun to fight against so if you want the crutch of hyper armor to win you your games then it's a skill issue and most importantly i'm just talking about the neutral hyper armor not the freaking hyper armor on all of her chain heavies their chain heavies with hyper armor that's fine it's good for trading and team fights but the neutral one has to go but hate to carry was still a very strong character even before adding the hyper armor on her heavy attacks and mind you she also got nerfed too because if you did a light attack into a kick you were inter you could be interrupted with a light attack now you can only get it off of a heavy attack and they can't interrupt you with your chain kick mix up the biggest issue with hit to carry and to fix her make it more in line with the rest of the cast without just giving her a hyper armor and calling it a fix is allowing her to have a better roll catcher when people will dodge away uh from her her kick mix up i think that would just solve so many issues with hit to carry without making her really overtuned and that is the end of the video thank you so much for watching everybody hope you guys enjoyed the discussion and uh, are excited for the new testing grounds for Warden. And as a long Warden enjoyer myself, uh, you know, it's it's exciting time. It's an exciting time. It's a very exciting time for all of us. And I'm glad you're all here with me to enjoy it because we can finally half sword and more how the shit out of people. And I'm hoping the animation is going to be great. You know, I'm excited for Thursday on uh, the testing grounds. I'm going to come out and I'm going to play him a Shinto ton. And it's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm really excited for this. I'm sure Havoc is too. And all you guys out there day is vault and all that cringe shit okay guys <laughs> i just want to i just want to look cool and uh get ganked to death while looking amazing okay and don't forget to check out the streams on youtube and twitch if you want to get notified on that either join my discord which is in the description of the youtube videos or go ahead and just click that notification bell i usually stream on monday for honor tech and doesn't really matter whatever i'm feeling and uh hope you guys have a great night take care bye bye see you later